Can't we know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> Can't get canceled. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, all right. Uh, also, uh, shout out to um. I, I just realized that this girl is the one who used to be on the Breakfast Club. Hey, iHeart. Yo, uh, hey, listen. You know, first of all, y'all shouldn't give a fuck about my opinion, but I just want to say, yo, um, what, what's Shorty's name? What's that big mouth girl? Who be up there? Just hilarious. She cool, but she like, she like, female Charlemagne light. Y'all need this girl up there at Breakfast Club. This Lauren LaRosa chick. Yo, she was fire up there. I ain't gonna lie. She's the only time, like, even with respect to Angela Yee, she's the only person I've ever seen, like, do y'all news report. And I actually see, like, oh, she's coming with facts, not just reading off blogs. She's doing some work. She's pretty good. And um, I, I know I know what's the name is, is come back from being pregnant. But I hope y'all find a space for this woman because she is really good. I like I like her, and I don't know I don't know if she's ever spoken on me. I don't know if she likes me, but I do like the fact that she looked like she's doing a little bit of reading <laughs> outside of what she sees on blogs. Like, and I'm like I fuck with that. So this girl's good. Anyway, she said, um, and I see her f frequently. Do I follow her? I gotta follow my main account. She said I did some reaching out. Trying to understand why Drake will file this lawsuit. This is what a source close to Drake camps tell me. Now, this already is going to tell me it's clearly not Drake, right? So Drake didn't tell her this. Um, again, first of all, I reached out to Drake too. Drake, Drake, he's not speaking on this, right? And he doesn't need to speak on it. Um, yeah, it is what it is. It's a lawsuit. You get what I'm saying? Cool. Drake's side decided to file this lawsuit not just because it's not like us song. It's bigger than the song which is why Drake is suing the label and not Kendrick directly. From what I was told, Drake feels as if his label is using the money made from them to fund Kendrick Lamar's song, burying him amidst a sensitive label negotiation he's currently in. I, I, I agree with that too. So Drake is in this new negotiation, like he even mentioned it before, where he said 400, like it's a low ball. Like, you know, he's, t he's trying to get more. Like, Reportedly, Drake want to get like 600 mil from this next label. He's kind of consistently shown, I will drop. Remember, Drake didn't drop as much projects as before. He was shown, if y'all want me to drop like NBA Youngboy, I'll drop three projects a year. I'll go on tour four times a year. I'm, give me the money. Show me the money. Like, give me it. I want 600 million. Right? Yo, I got a jumbo jet. I want to get a fucking spacecraft. Elon about to take us to space. Give me the money. Right? Negotiation. Remember I told you I thought that's how Drake was moving? Anytime you see people start bucking but not calling them out. So there's levels to negotiation, chat. And I know this, right? At the furthest end, you have Joe Budden and Kanye West. They, in mid-negotiation, they come out and call the person they're negotiating with racist and say fuck them. Respectfully, I love Joe, but I love and I love Kanye. But that's what they do. Like when they're trying to get their way, they come out, blast everything, and say "fuck you" to the person they they're gonna be in business with. Right? Sometimes it works brilliantly. Sometimes it don't. Then you have the Drakes. You they never tell you until the deal is done. But when they're in the process of negotiating, they start dropping hints. But tasteless hints. Oh, no, tasteful hints. I might leave. Uh, we'll see what the next summer holds. They'll just throw out these open-ended things. We'll see what's going on. Yo, just to remind y'all, that 300 mil last time, that's a low ball now. Like, they throw it in tastefully. Pause. Then you have, I like to think where I fit in, in all of that when it comes to negotiating. I'm like on the lower end because I won't blast you at all. Well, I don't really blast my business people like that. I blast ops. I don't blast business people. And, I mean, have I sued business? No, nah, I haven't sued people for business yet. No. Nah. Mm. And the only reason I put Drake as one more, like, belligerent over me because he's petitioning his own label. Like, you're almost at the point of, taking a action against the person you want to give you half a billion dollars right so anyway which by the way this also makes sense if he feels that his label is using him or using money they made from him to fund kendrick's song to 
because here's the thing. I could imagine Drake looks at him and says, yo, think about what Drake walks into a label negotiation with. Hey. First of all, Drake doesn't have an elaborate marketing campaign. By the way, one thing that should become very obvious. Again, remember I said, let's say bots are included. We don't know, but let's say bots are included. UMG is going to say we didn't, we didn't pay for no bots. They're going to blame it on Kendrick. So if Kendrick did pay for bots, we don't know if he did. Maybe he didn't. That's what UMG would say that if there was bots. That means Kendrick team did a rollout. By the way, or it might not be bots. It might just be a campaign. It's a campaign. That's very frequent. frequent campaigns. Drake don't do campaigns. Drake, for the last eight years. No, not eight years. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you when. I'm going to tell you when. No, no, no. Oh, fuck. I think around the time. Hold on. More life. Because views they did. Views they, they did, but Drake was also kind of getting more and more control. Around more life. So say 2017 till 2024. So for the last seven years. Drake been just literally operating off, I'm hot. I don't need to do nothing. That's another reason I keep calling him lazy, right? So when you're seeing these sales, even 400K, bro, he's doing it with, bro, this is song and dance between everybody when they want to really promote an album, Right? I won't say Kendrick necessarily did for this album, but even like say say DSPs. If DSP is gonna tell you, bro, to make sure we're fully behind your album, it would be dope if we had two weeks notice, you come into the office, you play us your music, blah, 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 blah. Do you think Drake is playing his music for none of these DSPs? No, nigga, they listen to it when we listen to it. <laughs> you know what I know? Cause I've gotten an exclusive on a Drake on Drake music and the people who work at the DSPs who should get his music weeks before they're hitting me to be like yo is he dropping tonight and I'm like nigga you working this spot he's dropping that <laughs> real talk so like he doesn't do that now I'm not gonna give him credit for not doing that because this is your job and you just operating off being hot without kind of you know any business no matter what you're supposed to take some of your profits and put it back into marketing. You're supposed to have a rollout. You're supposed to keep investing to keep getting more and more listeners or eyes or consumers to grow. You're not just to say, I'm the guy, I'm the hottest, and maybe because of some, because I'm putting out the hottest music and I'm making some social moves and you see me do a collab with 21 or, or Future, I don't need to do the other shit. But if you ask me, I think Drake has done that. So I'm not even, bla if, I'm not saying Kendrick used bots, but if Kendrick had a rollout, I'm not blaming Kendrick at all. He's supposed to have a rollout. The fuck? Everybody has a rollout. Beyonce has a rollout. Uh, um, um, Cardi has a rollout. Everybody has a rollout. When you see these people, they have a rollout. So Drake kind of like not doing it. I can't give him credit for not doing it when it's the industry standard to do it. Okay? Now, we're not talking about bots. Bots is something else. Okay. So, do I believe this? I actually believe it. I think Drake walked in that building and said this, right? And I guess, you know, I went on tangent, but this is what he probably said. Yo, check this out. I made $300 million on tour. I'm the highest streaming artist for all of the, the, the albums I gave y'all. CLB, honestly, never mind, for all the dogs and her loss. The streams are going through the fucking roof. You gave me no money for marketing. You didn't have to give me a shit ton of money to make it. I made it up there in, in my fucking $100 million house with 40. Noel mixed it down. Boy, Wanda cut the beat. Vinyls, uh, oh, Benny X. <laughs> you know what I mean? All the guys who, you know, they really cook up. They, they did it. Drake is probably producing his album, with all due respect, for like, yo, it's probably like how, you know how they be like, yo, an iPhone is made for like 15 bucks in China, but they sell two for 1000 <laughs> Yes. 
So when Drake goes to the fucking negotiation table, he's probably saying, yo, look at those albums. See, I told you I could drop that many albums in that in two years, right? Remember, basically damn near 2021 to 2023, damn there. You know what he's going to say? Hey, let me get some more money up front because I know I'm profitable. And I'm pretty sure them in negotiations is saying, this is like a bad loan at this point for us. And they're the label. They're owning less and less of Drake's projects because Drake has the complete overwhelming advantage in negotiation because he's not a new artist anymore. It's the reason why, like, you know, and by the way, you see this a lot in other in other type of businesses, right? Why does LeBron don't sign an eight-year deal? Yeah, I'm going to just hit y'all for every two years. Now, as long as your body could, the, the first moment LeBron takes a big injury, they're going to, that negotiation's going to look a little bit different. You get what I'm saying? But if you're still performing and you're still that guy, if every two years you're damn near a free agent, you keep smacking these niggas over the head. So I think Drake is coming back. He's asking for some enormous figure. He just got 400 for like two, two and a half years. I think he's asking them for 600. Nigga might be bold enough to ask for seven. Yeah, he might throw a little bit more of a tour, and he might be like, oh, no, yeah, I'll do a bigger tour. We could do a stadium tour. He just want a bread. Yeah, we could do a stadium tour. You get a piece of that. You get, I don't know, you, you get like a fourth of that. That's cool. Um, I'll drop four more albums from here till 2027. And they're probably looking at it, and they're like, the fuck? No, nigga, we'll give you like 500. And you know how they get Drake to bring his ass or bring his number a little bit down? Nigga, you just got spanked by Kendrick. Look, you're not with the culture feeling. What you mean? You want 700. We gave you four last time, nigga, we'll give you 450. Take it or leave it. 450, take it or leave it, nigga. And I could imagine Drake looking at them and saying, nigga, you on crack? Or maybe they, they were even more disrespectful. Yo, take 350, nigga. You know what Drake said? Say less. Yo, Oliver, um, yo, buy that domain, 100gigs.com. We're going to just drop it there. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's see if it works. Yo, his labels didn't even acknowledge other than claiming the songs as they eventually did. They did not. There's zero promo with any of the things he's dropped since the battle. None. Like, they're not touching it. And when I mean by promo, I know I already told you that they don't do promo really for Drake. But... A label usually just adds support to a song that they see is moving. No face had a little bit of movement. They're not doing nothing. They're not servicing it. They're, not, they're barely serving this as a radio. None of that. There's no campaign behind none of it. Okay, let that nigga do it. It's nigga, You got to cool that nigga down a bit. Anyway, Drake feels the label. is allegedly not protecting a major asset. Him which is conveniently timed around the time he's in negotiation for a new, new uh, uh, with a new deal with the label. From what I'm told, Drake's feeling like if I was Taylor Swift, a lot of things would have not happened in this whole Kendrick and Drake or Drake and Kendrick back and forth. Uh, he's completely right. Um, he's completely right. I only disagree with him here in one aspect. Number one, Obviously, he's not, he's not Taylor, but I, I think that Drake doesn't interact with his label like how Taylor does. And Drake has never weaponized anyone against a label like Taylor has. Taylor literally told him, yo, y'all get back in bed with, with, with TikTok or else. And they were like, yo, TikTok, come back. We need y'all. Taylor's going to be mad at us. We can't. Taylor swings a very big axe because she plays like that even on a PR level. And she is, she's done it to Scooter Braun. She's done it to many other people. Big Machine, all that. She's done it in a way where if Taylor is unhappy, we're going to see a lot of shit happen. We've never seen Drake publicly really complain about his label. Taylor has written a shit ton of letters. They're robbing me of my rights. I... Yo, I, I wrote all these songs in my bedroom when I was hurt from my boyfriend and they're robbing me of this, they're robbing me of that, they're robbing me. Yes. So they know Taylor will do it. They don't think Drake is on that type of time. 
And um, honestly, speaking about this, I think Drake should have turned to his fans. But here's the thing. Fans don't like that, though. You see, hip-hop fans don't really... Hip-hop fans don't... Most artists turn to their fans. Uzi did that. Hey, tell tell Generation Now to make me drop music. Y'all start bullying Generation Now. The whole time was Uzi's fault. You know what I mean? Uh, still, I think Drake should have probably turned to his fans before he turned to a lawsuit because fans have a lower IQ and your ops are going to turn and use on a PR level. Kendrick is paying like a lot of amazing people. I know a lot of them, allegedly. He's paying them really well to be able to get to able to influence internet narratives really well. Like, for example, say this, right? Which, what would help Kendrick in his album week is to put out an article that Drake is salty over a rap loss and is suing him, right? So they're going to clip this up and do whatever they got to do with in their ecosystem to make that happen. And that's why I think that Drake should have just appealed to his fans because when you file a lawsuit, no one's going to look at the nuance to say, if anything, we should give you props for not suing Kendrick. You sued your label. You you actually opted to not sue Kendrick at all. They're going to just look at you like, oh, you're police. you suing like it because they're going to twist this to make it seem like you're suing Kendrick. That's why everything is wrapped around not like us. Also, let's get to the obvious and the biggest play of this all. Drake has maybe hit the button that he cannot reverse. Here's what I mean. Remember, I keep calling these labels the slave master. And I keep saying I don't care how well they're paid or how well they're decorated or how much they're pro-black, they're still the slaves. My point is this. The last thing we remember about Diddy was when he sued Ciroc. He was the highest paid slave over that plantation. They say they gave him a billion dollars until he felt he was good enough to buck back at them in a lawsuit. Claimed that they were suppressing his Ciroc and not promoting his deli on as much. Next thing we seen, that nigga was in cuffs. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Next thing we seen, that nigga was in cuffs. That nigga thought he was so lit. Take that, take that. Oh, let me go sue Diageo. Oh, hell nah, nigga. After that, we ain't seen nothing look good for Diddy. Lawsuits came out the woodworks. That nigga been, he's in jail. Now, to be very fair, and I'm, I'll be fair, we did see Jay-Z also sue. Um, Bacardi, right? And he did get paid out because they now own Doucet. And looks like he, he avoided such fate, seemingly, at least for now. But uh, it always gets to that point when you start suing or you start going against that big company, even if you're the biggest asset, sometimes they come to a consensus, we need to put this nigga on his ass and show him. Exactly what Kanye said. Even was it was the line that says, uh, "You still a nigga in a coop." Exactly. So him, him uh, again. He hasn't officially sued, but the petition enough, and this is making a lot of news. All right. Okay. All right. So th th that's what uh, Lauren Larose is saying. Okay. I seen another angle of this. Let's see. Let's see. There's another angle. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Where the hell is that thing at? Is it this? Give me one second. Okay. I seen someone else post an interesting theory.
And if you ask me, I think Drake is not speaking on this directly because he doesn't want to. Um, he doesn't want to do that messy in the media shit where he's going at um, where he's going at his label. Even though I, I think it's inevitable because you know I think he filed it in a certain way, hoping that it wouldn't be a big deal, but it is a big deal now, right? And once the once the cat's out the bag. Um, it's, I mean, I guess he could withdraw the petition or he could, you know, wait to see what happens. Or, but people are going to talk about this no matter what now at this point, right? Okay, here we go. Somebody else has some supposed info on this, and this is uh, not too sure who this person is. Sierra Aaliyah P95, who is this? I got to see. Sierra Aaliyah P95. Who is this person? Oh, they supposedly work for Billboard. Okay. All right. New York Post. NYP, I think that's New York Post. Billboard. Okay. All right. I just got to make sure we, we check their credentials a little bit. Yeah. A Billboard editorial team. Okay. New York Post. All right. Cool. All right, L let's see what their sources kind of say about all of this. This person says, here's the deal. Allegedly, Drake has recouped the money U Universal Music Group gave him. And I actually do believe that. Drake, he got $400 million, And I think the way how Drake was working that shit. And one thing about Drake, man, you know Drake, one of them. You know what I mean? He, he going he gonna to get, he going to. They gave him 400, he probably made them niggas 800. A Billy. You feel what I'm saying? Yo, y'all gave me 400, I made you a Billy. Yo, it's time, y'all gotta give me some more money. I do think Drake, Drake recouped, right? Now, here's the thing, which you might not understand. Usually when a new artist gets signed, like recouping, fuck recouping, it's like the money's in perpetuity. Usually what the label's gonna make off your first album compared to what you're gonna make or what you got is gonna be... At minimum, 10x. You get what I'm saying? At minimum, right? Now, just to, I get that this is a lot more money, but just to kind of put in perspective, if you're saying that when you're a new artist, a label makes 10x at least off what you got, right? When you're at Drake's position, maybe it's only a 2x type of thing. They make their money back times two. They gave him 400, they made 800. Now, you got to remember, this is still business. Why gamble 400 just to make 800 when you could keep signing new artists? And again, you kind of control the game with Spotify to send third. You control all the all the 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 the, the knots and uh, I mean the all, all, all the um the fucking knobs that you could turn to get somebody lit. You make 10x off that person off Drake. You only make 2x at this point because you got too much leverage. So. Who do you really want to invest your future in? The guy do you have that you get 2X off of the money you give him? Or the guy you signed to a $100,000 deal, and then if he makes 20, he basically gets 2 million and you, gets, you get 18. Who you want to put more money into? Right? Because this is slots. We're, we're not playing blackjack. This is slots. This is a music business. You don't know where a hit could come from. Now, Drake has done a great job of, like, almost damn near predicting when a hit's going to come in, being a part of it. That's why he gets these favorable deals. But, 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 but theoretically, music is rolling the dice. A wise man once told me, shit, I'll tell you who told me that. The, the, nigga, the, the motherfucking guy who's the son of Lucian Grange. That's my guy, Elliot. Y'all know I got, you know the Academy Records is, on, is with Elliot Grange, 10K, right? You know, <laughs> still got my deal over there. You know what he said? Because I remember, I'm going I'm to I'm tell you when he gave me this advice. I went to Jacksonville to go visit an artist. This is what I'm trying. Like, I, I got I to gotta be a boss. I already did a little act shit. Like, me, I want to have the 360 experience of the whole music business, right? I'm doing the media shit. I want to do that, blah, blah, blah. Cool. I got this nice budget, blah, blah, blah. I got this label. I'm with this guy. Bet. Now we got to sign artists. I get somebody. I say, you the a &R, make it up. Go find some artists. You find some artists, whatever, whatever. Let's do a meeting. Cool. I go down there, I go sit with the artists, blah, blah, spend like a day or two in the studio, listening to music, this and third. I also took a couple other meetings. I brought some people out and I'm sitting there. Now, keep in mind, nigga, I'm the GOAT when it comes to this 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 this, this uh, media shit. I don't know about all these bum ass other niggas. I just know I'm the GOAT. You feel what I'm saying? So 
I know I'm always good. Anyway, I wasted about three days of my time. The nigga didn't sign to me. It was just like, and I remember thinking about it and I said, why the fuck am I chasing around these bum ass niggas, man? I make more money just sitting and fucking running my mouth. And I remember like, you know, I had stopped asking for, because that's how a label deal works. Like, yo, give give me my overhead for the deal, um, whatever, whatever, um, that we could do our job to sign people and put out records to y'all. And I just stopped asking for it because I just felt like I was just asking for free bread. I think it was like quarter million. Quarter, uh, it was all, what type of money? I can't remember what it was. And that was just overhead. That wasn't even signing money. I'm like, ah, oh, bro. Like, I feel like I'm just getting in debt. Now, you know, with labels, you know, gotta, they kind of write everything off. But I'm like, I, I, I just... I don't like being in debt. I'm not a debt type of person. I'm like a profitable nigga, bro. So I don't like being in So anyway, I just stopped doing it. Anyway, I started talking to him. And, and um, I remember Elliot saying to me, he said, yo, act, yo, you got you got this whole culture in your hands. You the guy. Like, fuck with all these other bum ass niggas. Nobody, nobody matters in media but you. You're creating half of these niggas. And I'm like, well, yeah. It's like, yo, you can sign them. And I'm like, well, well I could. But, bro, they wasted my fucking time. And, and I'm like, well, this other guy, like, he's not it. And the guy told me the best thing ever. He said, act, let me tell you this one thing. It's going to help you because it helped me. In music, you sign 10 niggas. He didn't say niggas. He's white. He said, you sign 10 people and one successful motherfucker pays for the rest. And I said, what the fuck? Because I was mad stingy. I was just like, I was trying to pick, I was trying to pick one guy and he's going to be the winner. I'm like, I don't have 10 people because all I can see is 10 headaches. I remember an artist calling me and I remember he calling me and I'm like, wait, I forgot. I'm now the label owner. I'm supposed to answer. I'm like, nigga, I got other shit to do. The fuck? You know what I mean? Call somebody else. <laughs> but anyway, no, he was right. He's right. Like, yo, in the music business, you sign 10 niggas, one nigga, one successful nigga pays for the rest of the niggas who ain't work. That's what I'm saying. Off a new artist, you make 10x. Get that nigga 50 grand, he now makes you 5 million. That's a good investment. You give Drake 400 million, yeah, it's a short bet, but he only brings you back 800 or maybe a billion. But it's still like 2x. You get 20x, 2x. You see why the labels might be like, uh, we could roll the dice with like 100 different people that could potentially be Dr the next Drake rather than just give this one guy all of this fuck ton of money. I hope y'all get what I'm saying. All right, I want to keep spelling it out. Anyway, all right, so Drake recouped the goddamn money. They wanted to renegotiate uh, and he wanted to negotiate for a higher price. Yeah, I want 600 this time, nigga. Allegedly, they ain't want to. Even after he fulfilled his end of the bargain after an audit, UMG a lot uh, allegedly bodied 60% of Kendrick's streams. And this beef was allegedly a play to the fame Drake, so he couldn't get a better deal from, from UMG. I'm not going to lie. This is some nasty business, and I could see it happen. I could see it happen, bro. We don't want to give you $700 million. Fuck out of here. Yo, cool this nigga down. Somebody beef with him. Yo, put out a story about him touching girls or something. I don't know. Fuck. You know what I mean? A deal that he had earned for recouping the label, the um, the record label money. A conflict of interest because Drake did what was asked of him. So there's a push going on. And UMG and Spotify in a partnership. Kind of sounds about accurate. In what I would think is going on. I don't have information to prove it. And I don't think Drake does either. I think Drake has a theory. And that's why he's filing this petition, right? Devious shit, bro. Devious motherfucking shit. I like it, though. I love it. Not gonna lie. Okay. All right. Now, y'all know I'm always trying to figure out why. Because it made no sense. Like, y'all know Kendrick just dropped the new, the, the new project or whatever. Drake... By the way, horrible timing, though. If I'm Drake, I'm filing two weeks from now. I'm filing two weeks from now. You, Yo, you can't... Let me tell you this. Respectfully, and I, I think I'm gonna tell Drake this privately. Well, I'm telling him now, so you'll hear. Kendrick is hot right now. He has the Infinity Stones, but I, I I do fear that the entire culture does not have the interest you may think they have in Kendrick without the mention or him being juxtaposed to to, to Drake. So if he's not sneak, this is, if it's a standalone, you got to remember, Drake dropped umpteen amount of projects where all we wanted him to do is make good music. We've never listened to Drake's mu music saying, man, I hope there's a diss song or there's a sneak that said this other guy. 
No, we just listen to the guy's music because we love it. Kendrick, he finally has the entire culture. Now, we always know there's some backpack, you know what I mean, uh, 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 um, barefoot wearing, shea butter Twitter, you know what I mean, extra woke, we gonna be all right type of hooligan who got a picket sign that's still from Black Lives Matter like that just stashed in the closet. We know them niggas listen to Kendrick all day and all night. But listen, you know how many people who just like, they be just listen to Cardi or they listen to this to some club shit. They like listen to Future, um, Thug. They don't want to hear a, a nigga doing all that pro black. They don't want to hear that shit. Respectfully, I'm not saying nothing wrong with that. There's mad different audiences, right? Those people, they only tune into Kendrick when they think that Kendrick finna this Drake. Like if they feel like he's about to get it spicy with Drake, they're gonna be tuned in. Otherwise, he was doing. Or him being pro black niggas, like that's a specific type of audience, and they're always gonna tune in. But that is that's been bread and stone for ten years for him. That's his audience. For him to get outside of this audience, kind of plays upon him, kind of including this. Oh nah, this is the victory lap to Drake. Oh nah, he's staying on business. Oh nah, this is the same energy that he had with Drake. So Drake has to be part of the marketing. So if I'm Drake. I want to give you no reason to get no more sales. I'm going to be quiet. I'm just going to disappear. Matter of fact, I won't even stream with XQC yesterday. Yo, I'm not going to be on your stream. And I'm going to say nothing. I'll just be on vacation somewhere. And then after two weeks, when your numbers are in, and this and the third, then you'll see me. I would have not filed a lawsuit now. And I would have not like been on nothing. I would have just been, okay. Because I'm telling you, there's a part of, again, I'm not saying, let me, let me further fundamentally break it down. If this is only Kendrick fans, I don't think they go, they go above 250. Kendrick fans, just that isolated group, he's like a 250, 275 seller. With him being the cultural saver, savior that's dethroning Drake and that exposing Drake, that's 500. That's the point what I'm saying. I remember telling NBA Youngboy this about Dirk. I said, Youngboy, you fell for the same shit that 6 9 fell for with, with Dirk. Dirk has had this fan base. He's been building up, building up, building up. But every single time, you know what Dirk used to do? Dirk would make it seem like he about to drop a diss album on niggas. Like he about to go. Remember when he dropped, ah, uh -huh, niggas like, oh shit. He about to go crazy on Youngboy. The nigga dropped a project, nigga. Well, well, that wasn't a project he dropped um, all my life, right? No, he dropped a project that primarily still wasn't about that. He did an interview with me. Dissing everybody. Or not dissing, but like addressing all the spicy shit. They're like, oh shit, Dirk about to be on time. And he don't act interview saying, yo, they can't say I, they can't say Sly for Vaughn no more, right? Remember that? What he did? He dropped a song, oh my lot. Yo, everybody tuned into that album was like, where's the young boy this? Where? Where? Smart. I think part of Kendrick, again, I'm not saying this is not, a, Kendrick has a great fan base. You know what I mean? Obsessive now because they're like, you know, they used to be regular. Now they're like K-Barbs. But he needs to kind of almost juxtapose his shit to Kendrick. No, not Kendrick. I mean, Drake. Drake, I've never seen, have to do that with Kendrick or anyone else. I've never seen Drake bait that he was going to disrespond, continue beefing with no one for people to tune in. People just tuned in. I hopefully y'all got that. It was already getting dragged for looking like, like whatever on that stream. Looking, Drake's been just looking very soft. Like I'm Drake. This is XQC. Real. Yo, this is so crazy, and, and Laura LaRosa, I fuck with you, but y'all got to stop. Drake came on the scene with take care. If Drake, if Drake mean mugs a nigga at the side of the court, y'all say he's acting tough. If he gets on a white boy streamer's platform cracking some jokes, he's looking soft. Like, we've heard this all his career. That's not what y'all want to say. Y'all just feel like, and I don't think it's nothing Drake's doing. Y'all think the impact of Kendrick has made y'all 
change our minds about Drake that Drake fell off or Drake is soft because he's not doing nothing different. Drake been making duck lips, taking pictures for 10 years. I know because I don't like none of that shit. <laughs> now everybody got an issue with everything. Drake has carved goofy shit in his hair and tried the hairstyles for years. It's only when this has happened, but I'm telling you, it's the fans creating it more than Drake. Because there's nothing he's doing now that that, that y'all could be like, oh, yeah, he ain't never did that before. The only thing would have been the the the, the um the hundred gig shit, but we now get to realize that was clearly at the label. Come on, bro. Streaming legend, me. I do music. In case you didn't know, I'm here. As you can see, fully intact, mind, body, and soul. In case you were wondering, right? Mind, body, and soul. Mind, body, and soul. You need facts to take me out. Fairy tales won't do it. Cheers to everybody. Boys live by I don't know what it is about light skin right now. Maybe because it's the winter and he ain't got no tan. He's just really in his feelings. But he's been looking real crazy, and I felt like. To do that back to back to back, the stream, you got new music that's supposed to drop from your artist. Why would you put yourself in that position? So I reached out um, and I spoke to someone close to Drake's camp and here's what they told me. The reason why Drake decided to move forward with this lawsuit was because he felt like the, the record label, which is supposed to be his record label too, and he makes them a lot of money. Y'all know Drake is a huge artist. He felt like they were using this song and funding money that he helps them make to bury him as an artist. And y'all are probably like, what the hell? Like, why would a, a record label want to bury somebody that's making the money? So what's been happening behind the scenes is that Drake has actually been in negotiations from what I'm hearing with the label. Uh, he was making or like he had like a deal for like four million or something like that. But he was asking for six. Now four hundred, girl. Now with his deal being over and then renegotiating. So basically, he felt like the label did everything that they could to make Kendrick Lamar's song, the biggest song, this is all alleged, the biggest song, to basically disvalue him so that now he's at a point where no label is going to want to give him more money than the deal that he just got because he's having a hard time right now. He's not beating the allegations because Kendrick's song and everything that Kendrick did is doing so well. He looks crazy. He doesn't have any new music out. The music that he did try and put out and all that, remember he put out that big file of all that... Um, that uh like the videos and all that stuff it went nowhere nothing right now is sticking from him well it, it went nowhere also um by by um design um you know i, I remember people asking about that drake was also sending very obvious messages um he was sending very obvious messages when he was posting on that burner account, he was sending obvious messages about why he was doing 100 gigs, right? Remember, the, everything is tied to that burner account. Do y'all do forget? Actually, I'll, just, I'll post this on the, on the main page. I'll post it to my main page. And by the way, yes, Chad, I do post on my main page. I'm trying to type Finsta. They will not let me type Finsta. Here we go. Got it. <clears throat> Again, it's about a post. Okay, remember when Drake posted this? Yeah, I just posted it. <laughs> if 100 gigs, remember he posted on the plot twist page? If his 100 gigs is a huge success, our building would collapse. And you will be crushed. In hindsight, when you think about that, maybe you're, you know, we're trying to get, understand maybe his POV. That would seem to add some credence to, oh, no, yeah, he, he definitely it wasn't a negotiation or probably still is. By the way, also, here's the thing. Him filing this lawsuit appears, or not a lawsuit, this petition seem to tell me he still hasn't struck the deal. Also, what this has told me is that Drake not dropping, like a lot of times when y'all hear artists talking about, oh, we still working on it, they're lying. Like, I think the him and Party Project is done. I think I think it's done. I think whatever he signs, 
this will be the first project off of it. If you and also, I'll go even further. This is me speculating here. I think Drake is signing a deal because Drake realizes his star power and celebrity is so big, and people will buy whatever he puts out. I think he's putting in the, the in these um in these deals he's he's doing with the, the label because usually when a label does a deal with you, it's solo projects. What we've realized is that Drake just did a, a, a joint project with Twenty One Savage. That counted. Sometimes they, that won't be that won't count in your original deal. They'll do like almost an addendum for that project because now it's two labels who own the masters or, or who has um who has you know um some type of interest in the rights and blah 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 blah. So they do an addendum to your deal. You can negotiate if it might count or whatever, whatever, or what you'll do as additional stuff to if you want to fulfill a requirement of a label, but or not label, but a, a album. But most al if they say four albums, they usually say within a certain time period, and you could only drop one album per so so and so months, and it has to be a solo project. Like yeah, they, they they really specify. So I believe one of the reasons Drake is doing him and Party, he's doing the same finesse he just did last time, but he did with Twenty One Savage. Right, except this might not only be his collab album, this might be equivalent to Honestly Nevermind. Okay, this is my collab experimentative dual album. I've never done like a, a solo R&B project. Are we thinking it's going to be R&B, by the way? Are we thinking Drake is rapping and party singing? Who, who knows? But I do think that that's why we haven't gotten that yet. Drake said this shit's dropping in November. TikTok, five days left. We out of November. So I do believe that Drake filed this petition because I do think that negotiations are falling apart or they're going nowhere. They're stalling. I still think he should have waited two weeks. You still wait two weeks. You can't contribute to anything any that, that, that um, Kendrick got going on because if I'm Kendrick team, I'm going to use this to, and I'm going to milk it, pause for all the promo I need. But he did post this months ago. If his 100 gigs is a huge success, our buildings will collapse. I think what we've realized from that is that as big as Drake is, pause. Him dropping no face and all these. I love circadian rhythm, by the way. If the labels don't touch those records, they all come and go. Respectfully. Respectfully. What we learned... And I think the labels are going to teach him something. Oh, you really think you're the guy like that, huh? Nigga, we're giving you that $400 million, but we make you. If we don't touch them records, them records don't go nowhere. You get what I'm saying? Now, I think Drake thought, well, if this worked, this would give me some leverage in negotiations because I might tease Yo, I'm going independent. Drake saying he's going independent would, cri would, would, would trigger a tidal wave of other artists in negotiation possibly going independent. And also newer artists who would normally sign would say, well, if the biggest guy is not there no more, why would I? So I think he was, you know, obviously he didn't do this through the media, though. He did this through, again, remember I told you this many different ways. If this was Joe Budden, he would just say it. If this is Kanye... He was just say, he was just say, fuck Def Jam, fuck this, that's what's going to happen. He didn't do that. Drake just tried to covertly drop music. And he even, to, 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 to create even more hype, I think he gave us a good, I don't think this is the A-roll footage, but he gave us all the B-roll, not all, but a good amount of the B-roll of his potential documentary that we know is going to come out that, Netflix is going to probably drop 30, 40, 50 million on. He gave us the B-roll of that free just for us to come to that one website, just to build his platform, just for him to drop some songs. And they did good. They did okay. But it's Drake. We used to number ones. And the label was, was sitting back like, see? So we told you? Yeah, you had a one top 20 song, but see how hard this shit is? See how much we do? Yeah. So about you getting 600 now, as we said, how about 350?
Sounds like negotiation. Right? Oh, boy. But this, but drama like this. So from what I was told, aside from a person, you know, close to his camp, was that the reason why I put the Somebody said no face was top of rap caviar for a month. I know. I know. You know I know? Because my man, my man called Cherry, hit me. Be like, yo, tell, because I, I think, you know, I, I think Drake, Drake really thinks Spotify really don't fuck with him. Or they might or might not. Call Cherry, hit me and be like, yo, tell Drake, yo, he's showing his track love. I told Drake that too. I said, yo, Drake, yo, my man Carl showing you mad love over there. He told you shit at number one. But I, I, I think Drake thinks it's bigger than that, honestly. He thinks it's a, it's a it, you know, people keep thinking he's beefing with people while He's at the place that we've accused Nicki Minaj of being cynically, where Nicki's been beefing with Atlantic while we keep thinking she beefing with um, individual artists. She's been beefing, like in her mind, with the conglomerate that will take any chick and try to hype her up to try to suppress Nicki or to have her surpass Nicki. So Nicki always been saying this, I'm beefing with the companies. Finally, Drake got to that point. Ill-timed, of course, because now all we can see is Kendrick and him. But I think I think Drake has been looking at it like, yo, I think Spotify is just in cahoots with, with, with what's the name? This lawsuit out was because he felt like it was his only way to kind of, it, it's more about the label and not about Kendrick. Y'all know it's still going to look crazy, so it doesn't matter. But he basically wants the label to understand that he's going to fight. Like, he's asking for his, his money. He wants more money than what he was in a deal for prior to. And again, I was told that it was $4 million. Now he's asking for six. But that's not what they're trying to do. So they're basically, in his opinion, and what he's alleging, is that the label's trying to corner him where he'll have to sign with them because where else are you going to go if they're not going to give you more money than what we're already offering you? And now you can't ask us for more money either. He also, from what I was told, felt a way. And you guys remember... There have been a lot of conversation around the fact that there was supposed to be some like cease and desist or whatever allegedly sent when Spotify uh, put up the Not Like Us song and all the other streaming platforms too. Because remember, Ken yeah, yeah, th 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 that also, um, yeah, he was. Yeah, I, I, I hear that not from Drake himself, but from from a few people behind the scenes. They're saying Drake felt that Spotify. A song calling Drake a pedophile that the the album cover of Not Like Us, which is literally um, Drake's house, for them to allow that to be the album cover, he felt that th this was a lot more trumped up than just an artist doing whatever they want, given the fact that historically... When it's 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 gotten to points of tense, either back and forth battles that could get violent or things that doxed people, where you would identify or put out people's private personal information, the streaming company has stepped in to say this goes against what our terms of service is. We we're not gonna fuck with it. Except Kendrick was allowed to put his house as a picture. As a um, album or a, a single art. And that was before the shooting. Not saying it had nothing to do with the shooting. But it's like if somebody tweeted out my address and then some random shit happened. It's hard to explain. It's hard to like not maybe say not saying you're the reason that it happened, but why the fuck did you do it? You, you That might be encouraging people to do some bullshit, right? Drake used the photo of Drake's house on the mat, and then there was a whole shooting at the house or whatever. I'm not connecting the two whatsoever, but what I'm told is that Drake also brought that up to his label. Like, y'all, if I was a Taylor Swift, like, I'm a big artist. I make y'all a ton of money. I'm, like, one of the biggest artists in the world. If I was a Taylor Swift, y'all would protect me. Y'all would go to hell and back for me, and that's not what's happening. I've asked for my, you know, the the, the address, uh, the location of my house on this map to not be used as the art for this song. Y'all didn't go fight for that. I've asked for more money. Y'all basically trying to stall me out and tell me I'm not worth the more money that I'm making, y'all. But y'all are literally living off of me as an artist and from what he's saying at the same time i'm finding out that you guys are using that money to fund my rival like literally my rival act versus just like 
you know what I mean? Putting money up on both sides and just letting the culture do what it does. Um, and I'm, you know, I think one of the biggest things is that even in the song, Not Like Us, right? Uh, Kendrick uses the word pedophile. We all know the allegations and all of that stuff or whatever, even though Drake has not come out specifically and responded to a lot of those things directly, we know bro is butthurt. Like you have to be, there's no way you're not upset about that. The whole world, you got kids in freaking fifth grade talking about he's a, a 69 guy. Like there's no way that you're not gonna be upset about that. But he feels like basically the label was supposed to protect him more from stuff like that, especially with another artist on their label who they could have blocked certain things for or from and things like that, but they didn't do it. So this right now, him suing his label is his play and letting them know like, yo, listen, like I'm not gonna sit here and take about this. It. Again, there was another conversation behind the scenes that I have been told was not true. Um, but there were rumors that Drake was trying to make it where Kendrick could not perform Not Like Us on the Super Bowl stage. Again, I was told by... I didn't hear that part. I source close that this was not true. But to me, I'm looking at this lawsuit in a time of and I'm like, why would you do that? Right? Like, it, it just doesn't look good for him. But... If I'm a corporation, if I'm the NFL, this is so messy right now. This lawsuit is so messy. And if the 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 evidence that, you know, Drake's camp is claiming that they have in his lawsuit actually comes out. And that's what's going to happen. Because he's asking in the lawsuit, like, yo, I need a deposition. I want everything to be looked through. Evidence. I want phone calls, text messages, emails. Because I want to know. Because right now he's just suing uh, Universal Music Group as a whole. He's saying, yo, I want to like dig deep. I want to know everything so that I can, number one, come up with who exactly I need to be suing, what I should be suing them for, like what are the crimes. And I want it, I want everybody to know what's going on also ever. So I'm being told that it's, it's not even specifically about Kendrick. Kendrick was just like the backdrop of it all because these, these money conversations and negotiations were. Yeah. Kind of what we have uh, kind of said. Um. Yo, I heart. Yeah, I need that girl up there, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. Keep keep um um Jess Hilarious for all the ratchet female jokes. But th that that girl is informative. Yeah, yeah, I should wanna keep her. Here we go. Here my boy go. Um, I've been around a lot of rappers and legal drama, and this is the best one I've ever seen when you understand it. So first, this isn't a lawsuit. It's a petition where Drake is asking the court to require Universal Music Group to give him evidence that he needs to bring a RICO lawsuit and a lawsuit alleging illegal business practices. What he says is, I don't know who the other people were involved with Universal, but under the law, Universal has to tell me who they are so I can sue them for the following. Civil RICO, deceptive business practices. What these people did is they used illegal bots to make it seem like Not Like Us was a lot more popular than it actually was. They cite to an academics interview where academics is on stream talking to some dude and the dude says, I got paid $5,000 and promised a percent of Not Like Us in exchange for delivering 30 million fake bot streams when Not Like Us first launched so that it would seem more popular than it was and the algorithms would bump it up everywhere. What's really interesting about Drake's claim is that if you watch the academics interview, academics questions the veracity, the truth of this guy saying, hey bro, are you sure? Like somebody promised you points for bot streams? There's producers and engineers and people who feature on songs who don't get a percent of the song. And somebody promised you, academics questioned this guy's story. Anyway, Drake's lawyers saw it fit for a filing in a New York state court. And they say, look, this is some evidence of the bots. Then they say that Universal typically takes a cut in order for somebody like Spotify to put a Universal song on Spotify. And that in this case, Universal wanted Not Like Us to be more popular. And so they agreed to take a lower cut and they gave it to Spotify on the low, low, cheaper. They paid radio for plays that, hey, Universal Music Group, in order to make Not Like Us artificially popular, paid people in radio. Apparently, they claim that all of this is illegal and that it caused damage to Drake by reducing his popularity 
getting him less streams. They argue that streaming is a zero-sum game. Every time Not Like Us got streamed, it resulted in Drake not getting a stream because you necessarily can't get a stream if everybody's listening to something else on that day. And they have all these other wild allegations in there, including this idea that Universal is firing people who have loyalty to Drake and preferring people who have loyalty to Kendrick. They also claim that Universal told Drake that, hey, this is not, none of this is our problem. Your problems are with Mr. Lamar. You should sue Kendrick Lamar's last name, by the way, is Duckworth. They say your problems are Mr. are with Mr. Duckworth. You should sue Mr. Duckworth. And if you sue Mr. Duckworth, maybe we'll jump in there with you. Because <laughs> what do I think is happening here? First off, my mind is spinning because I can't imagine that you're relying on a source that academics questioned and that, <laughs> but here's what I think is happening. I think you might have a situation where Drake realizes that not like us and everything around that song and this battle has forever tarnished his earning ability and his ability to make that money. This is what I think is, is so significantly reduced that he's got to do everything he possibly can to get it back. Even if that means filing these claims where you're out here I, I would never file a claim like this if I were him unless I guess there was that much money on the line because from a PR perspective, my gosh, what do we think people? Does this does this play well or does this play poorly for the boy? I'm wondering how much they lowball Drake. Honestly, they must have lowballed him significantly, right? Let's say you want to say they gave him 400 first. He does that, he recoups. Let's say he acts with 600. I'm wondering if they, they said 600. Nigga, we, we won't even give you 300 right now, nigga. Take 290. I'm wondering what happened. Universal Music has put out a response to the Drake lawsuit. Essentially, what they're saying is, look, you can come up with whatever legal arguments you want, say that we did this, we did that, but it's the fans that make songs popular. It's the fans who choose what songs they want to listen to. And my question to the general public, putting aside for a second the Drake angle and the, his claims that Kendrick Lamar's song was artificially boosted and it made him look bad. Put that aside for a second. Does anybody believe Universal Music when it says the fans decide what's popular? Or is there a large feeling amongst the public that the companies that control the algorithms that decide what songs show up on the playlists and the companies that actually control the playlists that where they have preset playlists that these algorithms and these playlists are what decides what people listen to like the old days radio kind of decided what people listen to and now streaming company algorithms decide that's what i believe i think that's what a lot of people believe and when lucy and grange put this statement out here Oh, please believe it, that the fans will always choose what they listen to. Yeah, I don't know so much about that, bro. Universal Music has put out a response to... Now, some people are going to look at Drake and say, Yo, Drake, you're doing exactly what you say you wouldn't do. You're not... You had your time, but you're not bowing out gracefully. It appears that you're, you're about to go kicking and screaming. There was a time... Um, Spotify playlist cover Drake Christian. There's a time where, where where Drake supposedly they said Drake was the cover of like even gospel playlists, right? And I, I forgot what it was, but it was like he dropped some song. They made him play the playlist cover of everything, even some some categories he wasn't in, uh, involved with. And some people felt like, well, yeah, well, that was his time, right? And he didn't complain then. So maybe he's now complaining now when it's going in somebody else's favor, right? That's an argument there. Um, I see I see complex. I see complex music kind of talking about this, right? Um, and complex, I don't know what's up with complex, but they've been super heavy anti-Drake. I don't, I don't know if they're just kind of following what they think their audience likes or whatever. Or maybe I'm just too much of a big of uh, of a Drake fan, and 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 I'm, I'm thinking anybody who's posting critique about Drake 
um, is a hater. I don't know. It either could be true. Anyway, um, so I, I seen they posted this. It says um, they said Universal Music Group has responded to Drake claims about uh, about the alleged artificial inflation claims of not like us. And um, I, I seen Boy Wonder. Shout out to my boy Boy Wonder. He says Universal owns a stake in Complex. By the way, which I was like, what the fuck? Complex Media. Who owns it? Now, when I when I was there, it was owned by Verizon and Hearst, but I think they sold it. What the fuck? What's this? Yeah, Complex. Yeah, back in the day. It was owned by Verizon and Hearst. Who owns it now? Okay, now it's owned by Network. Who owns Complex? Okay, so it's it's owned by Network. Yeah, BuzzFeed sell, s sold them. They sold them to Network. Let's see. Who owns NT? CEO of Network, blah, blah. Co-founder, da, da. Oh, Universal Music Group. A strategic partner in the acquisition of Complex. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it is what it is, man. Wait, Universal Group, Universal Music Group owns Complex? That's like a conflict of interest. Because if I'm Universal Music Group, I would have Complex talk shit about anybody now on Universal Music Groups. Or shit on anybody who I need to get shit on. Hmm, interesting. Through the Drake lawsuit, essentially what they're saying is, look, you can come up with whatever legal arguments you want, say that we did this, we did that, but it's the fans that make songs popular. It's the fans who choose what songs they want to listen to. And my question to the general public, putting aside for a second the Drake angle and the, his claims that Kendrick Lamar's song was artificially boosted and it made him look bad, put that aside for a second. Does anybody believe Universal Music when it says the fans decide what's popular or... Is there a large feeling amongst the public that the companies that control the algorithms that decide what songs show up on the playlists and the companies that actually control the playlists that where they have preset playlists, that these algorithms and these playlists are what decides what people listen to? Like the old days, Radio kind of decided what people listen to, and now streaming company algorithms decide. That's what I believe. I think that's what a lot of people believe. And when Lucy and Grange put this statement out here, oh, please believe it, that the fans will always choose what they listen to. Yeah, I don't know so much about that, bro. Universal Music has put out a response. Hmm. So here's the thing. Drake lawyers have to win that lawsuit, in my opinion, in order to be successful. They have to win it for big money because look at the PR. This is, it looks like an abject PR disaster on a level I've never seen before. Look at the PR. Look at the, com look at the response across Twitter. If you don't win this lawsuit for bees, multi, like 100 M's, I don't see how you will ever win <laughs> the decision to, that you just made. Wow, look at this PR debacle. And so you're the guy who went out there and greenlit this. You have to bring it home with the biggest returns. So here's the thing, Drake lawyers. I agree. I agree. Um, here's the thing, though. I think this is an uphill battle for Drake to win because bro, the only way he wins this is if these companies give him the information that is snitching on themselves. I'm pretty sure this isn't their first rodeo. They have, they have, they, they, these companies know about the FCC. Like, I mean, it, 
Like like this kind it, it kind of becomes a little bit close to home. That's why I'm I'm you know it's a little bit close to home, so I don't want to say too much because <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> but it, it, it's a reason why these companies have a way to designate certain shit. Oh, I wasn't doing oh oh I was I was paying for a consultant. That that wasn't that's not payola. That's a consultant. If a company gives academics a hundred thousand dollars to tell them what's popping or what's not, that's technically the consultation that I'm doing for, let's say, I don't know, let's say for six months or album rollout period. Say that's the consultation, but, you know, it, it kind of also inherently includes me playing that person's song a lot because now I'm tuning into their music a lot more. And I genuinely, because I'm also looking into their life, I'm posting about their life a lot more. And it's uh, 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 did they pay to do something or did they pay me to consult by but the very nature of the consultation that came with a hundred thousand dollars i'm now kind of like you know really in tune with what's going on with them and so it's it's gonna be really hard to 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 um to prove but but, but secondly it's, it's a secondary here's the thing universal probably don't have the, the, the data for it you're gonna have to go get kendrick so this is why this is why i kind of agree with the pr nightmare because Yes, I think anybody who's getting at Drake today, saying that Drake is, you know, suing Kendrick, you're flagrantly wrong. He's not. But I don't think this lawsuit goes anywhere without you suing Kendrick. And that becomes the problem, right? So you're going to either have to rip that Band-Aid off by saying, yeah, I am suing that fuck nigga. And even then, bro, let me tell you how companies, like, Kendrick's like PG Lang and other companies move like bro it's under the table they're greasing you up Universal's gonna cut POs yo you work with these other th these other companies yo bro I'm gonna just send you some Bitcoin yo bro like yo uh, yo, yo yo you in New York when I get there I'm gonna just give you cash <laughs> like yo you know what I mean <laughs> bro so again and again it, 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 that might be illegal technically with fcc especially with, with like airwaves and shit like that but it's kind of unregulated bro like you're not gonna catch these niggas doing that you're not gonna catch these niggas for bots like you gotta be a stupid motherfucker to get caught for bots you gotta, i'm being honest with you like that's what i'm saying yo i think i think 80 percent of artists are botting you're gonna you gotta be a stupid motherfucker to, yo listen i and i, and I talked to my guy from spotify shout out to my man carl like, he actually, you know, this is not a space thing for Spotify or nothing like that, but that's just his, his experience. He's like, yo, we, we we do a really good job to make sure all streams are real. Like, our team is pretty good doing shit like that. Bruv, of course you're not going to catch the bots. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, th this whole industry that's about manipulating that. Of, like, of course that you're not going to catch everything, right? You, Of course, y'all think y'all do. It's probably impossible for y'all to do. Same with Apple. Right? It is what it is. Somebody told me to play this Duppy's video. I thought this nigga died. Play video. I'm no dog in this fight. I like Kendrick's music. I like Drake's music. Cap! Got a, yo, I hate no nigga saying that you got a dog in a fight, man. You niggas was halfway to the poverty line. Unemployment, you and Mealy Mall, that detergent stealing bandit. You niggas is relevant. I killed you niggas two years ago. Because Drake opened that nigga DM and told him like two things. That's why people start looking back at y'all. So y'all do have a horse in the fight. And like, just keep it a bean. You can be, be honest about that. All right, anyway. I also think both of them have used bots via UMG, whether they knew it or not. What's still. That's also, see, this is one of them situations where even a dumbass makes a, a good point. Yeah, that's another thing, too. So, I, but, but here's the thing. I don't think UMG's doing the bots. UMG contracts a lot of things. You, you, these days, these labels contracts everything out, right? Um, so, directly, they probably have certain ways to inflate. But we're not going to get to the silly inflations until you get to, like, these really ancillary companies. That may be UMG you know, through his subsidiaries, whether it's um, Interscope or whether it's Capital, 
they work with like this other agency that does PR that works with this other agency that focuses on meta that works with these other agency that fucking does the bots. Right. And you have like five levels of separation. You think the person sitting in like, like the people sitting in universal probably has some type of understanding that bro, you know, when you pay that bread, some, some, some shit going to come back. Just pay the bread. Hey, listen. Hey, I'm just going to pay you for PR. Whatever happens, happens. You know what I mean? Like, I'm pretty sure it's not like, yo, we need we need 400 million streams, fake streams. Nah. At this point, it's like, I mean. It out to me in that paperwork was the accusation that UMG lowered their licensing rate by 30% for Not Like Us. Just a quick, quick. How does Drake know that though? Like, I think that's where it has to be. It, that that I would think he got that info from the people who were former workers of UMG, right? Remember, he said that there were people that were cool with Drake at UMG but got fired. Which then I would instantly think about this: if unless those guys still have the documents, which even if they do, is it admissible? Because if if, if remember, this is not criminal. This is civil. If those dudes are on an NDA, which Universal 100 million percent have the any employee who would see those privilege conversations about royalty rates or or licensing rates, of course you're under NDA. If you go snitch to Drake because Drake's your guy and you got fired, bro, is anything you'd say to him or send to him admissible when they're going to be like, nigga, you're on an NDA. Get the fuck out of here. So I wonder how Drake would prove that. Remember, this is not a criminal case. This will be civil. History lesson, how we even got to the value of what a stream is, was based off Spotify and the three majors negotiating on what that value would be. What makes it even crazier is all three majors have... Oh my God, who's this stupid ass nigga? Stash Lomain, Drake suing is not criminal. Only the federal authorities, like not because they use the word RICO, means it's a criminal situation this is all civil okay only the state could bring state or the feds could bring or the county on behalf of the state could bring or the municipality on behalf of the county on behalf of the state could bring uh, um criminal charges brother like what the fuck I, niggas be charging criminal shit all the time then you know what i mean like yo that bitch slapped me <laughs> you're going to jail no you just sue you get try to get money have actual stock and ownership within Spotify. That would be illegal in any other business in the world, but it's the music industry, so anything can fly. I'll, to the point that I worked at a major when Spotify went public, and they emailed all of us as employees and said, you cannot buy stock because that would be insider trading. Now imagine you're an artist, and you know that the people that own your music plus the people that distribute your music, which is a whole separate tech company, are in cahoots to define what a dollar means within the music industry. And then you later find out that for one artist and one song, they devalued that dollar. You wouldn't have an issue with it? I have no dog. In now I gotta be honest, okay. Um, Mr. Ginger over here does have a, he does have a great point. Um, and yes, uh, unfortunately I gotta agree with Ruri. Um, but yeah, no, no, he actually has a good point here. The, the, here's the point. Uh, here's the thing about his point. Hip hop and how, listen, I run media. You appeal to the stupid person. Nobody's thinking about that. Like what he's saying makes a lot of sense. That's like almost market manipulation. The stupid niggas who are the majority of who consume this, this here, <laughs> this here culture, they won't get what you're saying. Like they won't even understand what the fuck you're talking about. It's the reason why, like, artists is so dumb, too. You know what I mean? It's just like, what? <laughs> like, they don't get it. You know what I mean? It's like, like if I, if I, exp if I explained it to y'all, like, y'all would get it. I know because we talk about hip-hop more. But the, the regular consumer who's on Twitter just trolling, they're just fucking dumb. You get what I'm saying? Like, they're not. I think, I, I, I personally think we have one of the smartest audience in hip-hop. I'm going to tell you why. Because, bro. We don't just read headlines and just like an uh, article. We're reading every court document. We're trying to educate each, uh, ourselves. We're trying to like really go way deeper than the surface. And then obviously, my name is fucking academics. But to the regular consumer, like they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. 
like and a good equivalent would be like yo bitcoin what's the price of bitcoin right now right Ninety four thousand, right yeah if everybody right now buying a bitcoin today was paying ninety four thousand dollars because the market has claimed is so the market would be um spotify apple and and, and amazon right um they have claimed that's what a Bitcoin costs. And all of a sudden you heard that, I don't know, BlackRock, right? Just bought like a bajillion about a Bitcoin for like $8,000 a piece while you got to pay $94,000. you would be like, what the fuck? This shit rigged. Shit's rigged. It's kind of what, what he's kind of saying in like in like album terms, except nobody like, also, also here's the thing too. Nobody cares about rich niggas. Like Drake is on a jumbo jet, right? Like, <laughs> yo, did y'all see Drake's story? Yo, it's so hard to feel bad for rappers when they start telling you, like, oh, my God. Yo, these labels are cheating. They don't want to give me my $700 million. You're like, I, 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 like, really feel bad that they won't give you your $700 million. I'm <laughs> like, what the fuck? You can't even understand what they're talking about, right? Um... <laughs> Look at Drake. This is how Drake goes to sleep on a fucking jumbo jet nigga with a big ass bed nigga. This shit looks better than our rooms. Like, come on. That's it. Niggas on a fucking cargo jet, my nigga. nigga look, this shit looks like it's a big ass master bedroom, bro. Like, how the fuck do you. Like, when a nigga is basically saying, yo, I can't get my $700 million that I wanted. Okay. All right. We're going to go kicking and screaming until they give you your $700 million, bro. <laughs> like, fuck no. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. That's another thing why Kendrick's so good. You know Kendrick's rich as shit. Kendrick's up a couple hundred M's. He still act like he broke his shit. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. He don't show off no car, no nothing. The only thing we found out that Kendrick Kendrick bought was like some $70 million house. We're like, what? He had, that he had that money? Rich as shit. Drake be just showing off all the wealth. We can't feel bad for him. <laughs> Kendrick buys house. He bought a new house. $40 million house. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to feel bad for these niggas, man. That's why that's why I think people won't empathize, right? But did Ruri make a good point? I think Ruri made a good point. All right. Was that was that the gist of it? I think that was the gist of it. All right. Yeah, probably. I like Kendrick's music. I like Drake's music. I also think both of them have used bots via UMG. All right, hold on, hold on. Eric Phillips, thinking of the five, I said, bro, act. You got to admit, this is soft as shit, man. Bro, begged, he begged to get cooked. He got cooked. Now he's trying to sue. This shit is sad. Well, I don't think he's trying to sue to change what you might think is a perception of the battle. That's written in stone. I, I, I think he's realizing that the effects of some of the, the nefarious things in the battle has changed perception about him. So it's not about the battle. Right? Like, because if it's just a rap battle, cool. If you want to say Kendrick raps better, cool. That's, that's cool. But if someone used a weighted scale or they used a uh, um, weighted die and they basically change the perception of someone, yeah, I could, I could see how, you know, and even then he's not suing Kendrick. He's getting at his label who he believes in a bigger scheme devalued him based on such he believed that they allowed shit to happen or either positively negotiated for kendrick's benefit only to it realizing that would devalue drake and devalue him in the time that they're in a negotiation with him i could see that now, again, that's why, and by the way, we said you, you got to admit that it's soft. I mean, I think if he sued uh, Kendrick directly, I think people would just say soft. I ain't going to lie. I'd probably be like, yeah, it kind of look, looks a little soft. But that's why I think he didn't sue Kendrick. But here's the thing. For this type of lawsuit, you got to sue Kendrick. That's the funny part. You got to sue him. Right? Because that's all, what I mean, sue him. You got well, you got a petition him, actually. Because he's the only one that's going to have the details you need, at least about bots, to, to, to get at, what's the name? whether they knew it or not what stood out to me in that paperwork was 
the accusation that UMG lowered their licensing rate by 30% for Not Like Us. Just a quick, quick history lesson. How we even got to the value of what a stream is was based off Spotify and the three majors negotiating on what that value would be. What makes it even crazier is all three majors have actual stock and ownership within Spotify. That would be illegal in any other business in the world, but it's a music industry, so anything can fly. I'll, to the point that I worked at a major when Spotify went public, and they emailed all of us as employees and said, you cannot buy stock because that would be insider trading. Now imagine you're an artist and you know that the people that own your music plus the people that distribute your music, which is a whole separate tech company, are in cahoots to define what a dollar means within the music industry. And then you later find out that for one artist and one song, they devalued that dollar. You wouldn't have an issue with it? Okay. I have All right.